CRG have just given us their intended release window for server meshing, and it's closer than you think. We've had our first letter from the chairman since the end of December 2020, and in it there is so much information how the patches are going to work this year, what milestone they've just hit which has brought server meshing so much closer, they've confirmed a whole bunch of gameplay that we did and didn't know was coming this year, as well as what's going on with CitizenCon, a new real world holiday to go with Star Citizen, and all sorts of other stuff. Here's what he said. This year we find ourselves on a similar path with three huge technology initiatives that will fundamentally change the experience and immersion into Star Citizen. The first of these is what we're calling persistent entity streaming, which is the foundational tech that enables server meshing. Persistent entity streaming is the hardest part of the work needed for server meshing, and it is the one that has required the most engineering. It fundamentally changes how we record state in the universe and delivers a level of persistence that you just don't see in other games, whether they're MMOs or even single player experiences. This is what he talked about when he said dropping your coffee mug on a planet coming back three months later and finding the same coffee mug. We all know the universe does not work like that at the moment. The PU, even if you drop something within your own ship, if it's not in the inventory or in a rack in its dedicated place, it's not there when you log back in. This is going to change. Chris goes on to say that this is the longest period of work they've had to do, the hardest bit that they've had to do, to get server meshing in. This is going to bring about the first stage, static server meshing, and what that's going to look like to you and I when we have Pyro in the game, which will come along with static server meshing. You're going to have one server running Stanton, one server running Pyro, and you will literally change between the two as you use the jump point. Later on, that will become much more dynamic. The key thing to take away there, when static server meshing first comes in, we're not going to see, with that first patch, a massive improvement. We're not going to suddenly have more players on. AI isn't suddenly going to become much sharper. It's the building block. It's the foundation of server meshing. This is the milestone they hit. This is really interesting. Paul Reindell our director of engineering for online tech, spun up a server, populated the entity graph to its initial state, along with the replication layer, which is basically uh, an in-memory cache for the universe um, in a back-end database. He then connected a client, placed down a series of small objects like cans on the surface of Aberdeen, along with an 890 jump and an anvil arrow. He then killed the server and the client. The server was restarted. They didn't populate the entity graph as it had been populated previously when they started it the first time. And then they connected a client. They go went back to Aberdeen and everything was exactly as he'd placed it. This is a huge milestone. The state of the universe was recorded to the backend database and when he restarted the server it just connected to the replication layer which had initialized itself from the database and continued with the universe at the state he left it. That may not seem revolutionary to you or me, but I can tell you it was akin to Neil Armstrong taking one small step. Once persistent entity streaming comes online, Star Citizen will be a different universe. Full persistence will provide over the coming years, an experience in gaming that most other online games do not provide. A universe you can escape to, that is affected by your and other player actions, with the state being dynamic and persistent. If you crash land on a planet, your shipwreck will persist while you forage for food and water to survive, and perhaps maybe some wood to make a fire to keep warm. Log off and come back to what you built, or, perhaps once you've been rescued, another player will stumble on the wreck of your old ship and the long extinguished campfire. Find a corner of the galaxy to make your own, collect resources, import material to build your outpost, decorate or arrange your hangar or home how you like. 
And Chris has always managed to capture kind of people's imaginations with that sort of stuff. But this is the first time they've had this working. This proves that the server meshing concept can work. This is huge. Anyone that was anxious, because let's face it, server meshing is what this game hinges on. If they cannot deliver server meshing, Star Citizen is dead in the water. It is server meshing that we will rely on to eventually increase player numbers to make the AI more functioning, to be able to deal with capital ships and their like in the verse. I mean, there are capital ships in the works that have a higher crew count than we have server capacity. Without server meshing, none of those things are possible, and they've just hit that first milestone. So, when are we going to see this, if everything lines up? Here's the key bit. Evo Carti will be able to test server meshing in the PTU at the end of this year, if everything lines up. And if that goes well and as they intended and the uh, persistent entity streaming works just as they want it to, in theory, it will go to live at the end of quarter one next year. That's quarter one, 2023. Now, if they achieve that, that means pyro. Quarter one, 2023. Personally, I think there might be a little bit of a delay and I think it's wise to prepare for that. As they've said... They have both the Frankfurt and Manchester studios shifting premises that are two premises that are still under construction right now. So any delays in construction, any delays in them getting the materials or the supplies they need, bearing in mind we're just coming out of the P word, the pandemic, any of those delays is obviously going to have a knock on to what's going on. So I think it's probably safe to say there will be a delay. And hey, if there's not, we're all going to be happy, right? Now, this uh, persistent entity streaming is coming in 3.18, which is going to delay it. So, 3.18 is going to require, they think, about three months in PTU. So, it's going to have to go through Evocati, PTU Wave 1, PTU Wave 2. They are going to be much, much longer. And they're basically saying that's because... You know, testing at scale, they're expecting lots of feedback, lots of things they're going to need to fix to make it fully functional. Um, and given how players are really good at breaking stuff in new and unexpected ways, that's going to be very likely. So, to tide people over, there's actually going to be an Alpha 317.2 patch. And with that, they'll bring new missions, new locations, and other gameplay. That's expected to drop in late June. So... That will tide us over. Those that aren't interested in trying the PTU will have that to get their teeth into. Those that are, make sure you get in there. Test, test, and test again. And then take it to the issue council. Give these guys what they need to get it working so that we can finally get our hands on some server meshing at the end of the year, beginning of next year, with Pyro as well. You may or may not have noticed a little bit of a graphics increase. Um, certainly those with high-end systems will have noticed there have been frame rate improvements. A lot of this is based around their work on the Gen 12 renderer. They have now just confirmed that the bulk of the Gen 12 work will be done and complete and included in 3.18. With the Vulcan API stuff being done, hopefully, by the end of the year. That's really massive and hopefully that will mean massive performance gains for us um, across the board whether you're on a top end system or whether you're struggling along, along at 12 frames um, with the game big performance in, uh, improvements this is good news for us now in terms of gameplay and ships that are coming this year that we weren't sure about it has been confirmed that also this year we'll be getting bounty hunting version 2 alongside the already planned physicalized cargo and salvage he's also mentioned as i think we've kind of figured out from their teasers and stuff the corsair and hull c will be arriving alongside the vulture and the ships that are now being teased all over the place for invictus fleet week he seems to confirm as well that salvage and physical physicalized cargo will both happen in the next patch 
He mentions specifically that they will be within 318. He says, As it did not make much sense to engineer the revamped physicalized cargo system and salvage for the old system, these two features have been engineered for persistent entity streaming and will arrive with 318. So whether or not that's been updated on the roadmap, I don't know, but he seems to confirm that we will be getting those also with 318. 318 is turning out to be an absolute monster of a patch. Now I know, unfortunately, the CitizenCon announcement is going to upset some people, but I think in the context of what's going on this year, hopefully people will find it in their hearts to forgive them. There will be no physical citizen con again this year but because this is the 10th anniversary of cig existing as a company they're going to do one online there will however be no keynote speech or keynote presentation that means that what we saw last year in pyro with the three different approaches to the mission getting the artifact um, and what we saw the year before on Microtech, getting the keycard, stealing the data, and then escaping in the Carrick, we're not going to see that. What we are going to see, they say, is a celebration of you, the community, with presentations and panels from our developers to share with you the progress we are making and the near future of what you can expect from Star Citizen in the year ahead. As I noted back in my December 2020 letter, we are still going to be quiet on Squadron 42 until it is time to start the release campaign. We are not quite there yet. Know that the progress is coming along nicely, but we are not quite ready to pull the curtain back on Squadron. So, no release date for Squadron. CitizenCon will be a thing, but it's going to be much reduced. You know, bear in mind, they even say with the moving that they've got to do and everything else, I think we can all agree, maybe focus on the server meshing stuff, show us what you're working on, but not necessarily an uber polished section of the game. They also talk about something that I'm really quite excited about because it means I get to drink. Bar Citizen World Tour. Now, First Contact Day is an in-game holiday, happens in June. They're going to pair that with a new out-of-game annual holiday. International Bar Citizen Day. We will celebrate this inaugural new holiday by hosting Bar Citizen events simultaneously near all of our development studios in mid-June. So that will be Manchester, Frankfurt, Austin, Los Angeles and, and hopefully Turbulent up in Canada but we're not sure yet. Details on the when and where coming very soon. After that we plan to branch out and bring the fun to events that may not be as close to our studios. Our community team is planning to embrace bar citizens around the globe with renewed vigour, bringing goodies and developers with them to greet and mingle with all of you as part of the celebration of our 10th anniversary. And they then go on to say, if you run a bar citizen, if you have an established event, or you're going to do something like that in June, get in touch with them, they want to hear from you, hopefully to send you some goodies, or maybe even a few of them turn up in person. I have to say, I'm absolutely blown away by the contents of this letter. Um, I was planning a much more involved video that I'm going to uh, release hopefully in the coming week um, as part of my return to the channel, um, but this was just too good an opportunity to miss. So apologies, it's just staring at the letter that he sent, but I wanted to get this out as quickly as I could to you guys. Server meshing coming is massive. The fact that they've admitted now they are over the hill. They've done the bulk of the work for Static. They've overcome their key uh, technical blocker. Fills me with confidence. I was beginning to feel a bit anxious because like I say, without server meshing, there really isn't a game here. The fact that they've made that much progress is filling me with the warm and fuzzies. Really keen to see the Corsair and the Hull Sea. Um, and I'm blown away when you think of how long it took to go from prison gameplay, um, you know, mining to prison gameplay to refining. Those are the gameplay loops we've had recently. And then all of a sudden, in short order, we're getting repair, salvage, we're getting a cargo refactor, we're getting Bounty Hunter version 2. So we've got two new gameplay loops. We've got complete redos of two of them alongside a massive graphical overhaul, persistent entity streaming 
hopefully some server meshing at the end of the year. The dynamic event that they're releasing around Fleet Week looks phenomenal and a lot of the feedback has been really, really positive. Hopefully, this is going to be a big year for us. Lots of progress. And then, you know, maybe next year we can look to get a bit more of an update on Squadron 42. Understand when that's coming out as well. Because that will really allow them to focus on the PU. Got to say, I'm kind of excited about being back and talking to you guys. I will talk about why there was a delay much further down the line, but content is king, so that will probably come in my next community comments video if you're interested, because that way if you're not, you just get Star Citizen content, and that's that. For all of you that have hung around whilst I've not been here, I really appreciate you staying subbed. You guys are absolute heroes. You're the reason I'm back, um, and I really look forward to talking to you. Uh, over the coming years and as the game develops. You've been watching Drinkers With Gaming Problems. Thank you very much for stopping by. See you soon.